We're all familiar with the headlines. The graduation rates are going down, dropout rates are going up. And these headlines hurt. I think we all feel a collective hurt because we understand the cost. The cost to the individual and the family, the financial cost to keep someone on public assistance or worse, incarcerated, and the economic cost when we don't have a qualified workforce. And the numbers are staggering. 65,000 people in the greater Rochester area do not have a high school education. 10,500 between the ages of 18 and 24. 5,000 young people between the ages of 15 and 21. I don't know about you, but I feel like a bystander watching a disaster and feeling helpless and hopeless, not knowing what to do, not knowing how to help, but wanting to help. And, and there are lots of programs and lots of people trying to help. Head Start, it's a great program, and it does give kids a head start. But as one local executive told me, 50% of his kids, his Head Start kids, go home to parents without high school education. And we know the antecedents to dropping out. We understand that, the parental factors, the family factors, socioeconomic status. We know that grade failure and pregnancy, the parental commitment to education and their own level of education, as well as peers, schools, neighborhoods. We know all that. But these are just statistics. These numbers represent real people. And I met some of them and talked to some of them and I want to share their stories. Desiree. Desiree is 22. She told me she dropped out of school because she was too cool for school. Getting into fights, getting into trouble, doing all the wrong things. Desiree now has a young child herself. And she worries at the end of the month that there won't be enough food for diapers and clothing. She recently moved from a shelter to an apartment with her boyfriend. She wants more. She wants to realize her dreams. She dreams of going back to school. And she dreams of going to college. Her family laughs at her. She wants to prove them wrong. Desiree studied for four months to take the GED at a local mall. And then when it came time to take the test, the test was given a suburb that was inaccessible to her. So she didn't have transportation, so she couldn't, couldn't get there. Neil is 33. She has three children. She also dropped out of school, failing, be, failing behind, getting into trouble. Her father sent her to live with another family, part of the family in another part of the state. That didn't work out. She got into serious trouble, ended up going to jail. She said she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was a drug charge. Her mother had to watch her kids while she was in jail, and that hurt. But now she's out and she wants more for her kids. She wants to show them that she can do more and be more. She wants to do it for them. She told me that she dreamed of being a lawyer, but she worries that that might not be possible now because of her background. I said, come on, Neil, to keep the dream alive, you can be a lawyer. She too studied for the GED and actually took the GED. However, she failed it by three points. So I got to thinking, is the GED the answer? Let me start by asking you, what do you think the E stands for in GED? I can't hear you. Equivalency. Equivalency. That's what I thought, general equivalency diploma. Well, I started to do some research, and a 2010 study told me a lot of different things about the GED that I didn't know. It's been misclassified as an equivalency. It stands for general education development. It was meant to be a credential. It's an eight-hour test. How can that be equivalent to somebody taking 40 credits and earning a high school diploma? It doesn't really give anybody an economic or labor market advantage over someone who doesn't have a GED. Most people do not pursue post-secondary education with a GED. And finally, and probably most disturbing, it may in fact induce people to drop out of school with the false belief that they're going to get an equivalency diploma. I want to tell you about three other people that I met, tell you their stories, which 
started out very similarly to Nilda's and Desiree's, but now on a very, very different track. Percy. Percy's 28 years old. He told me he dropped out of school for nonsense. Nonsense, nonsense. I just was doing all the wrong things for all the wrong reasons with all the wrong people. And he too got into serious trouble. He went to jail for armed robbery. And while he was in jail, he saw men like himself, like a revolving door, in and out. And he wanted to be a better man. He wanted more for himself. He had a younger brother at home. And he'd call him on weekends and say, Percy, when are you coming home? And that hurt. Because Percy wanted to be a role model for his brother. He wanted to be a better man. And he is on his way to being that role model. Donald's a little bit different. Donald wasn't a bad kid. He didn't get into trouble. He came from a broken home. And he needed money, so he got a job. Dropped out of school. And he worked hard. And he became a boxer. He learned how to box. He actually has won some Golden Glove awards. And he loves working with youth. So he took his boxing to the local urban league and started to teach kids how to box. And he would urge them, stay in school, do your homework, study, get your diploma. And they'd say, but Donald, you don't have a diploma, and you're doing great. And that hurt. Because he wants to be a role model for kids. He dreams of going into a career in law enforcement and working with youth. And he, too, is on his way. Bonnie lit up my day. She is a neat lady. Bonnie dropped out of school for all the usual reasons. She got pregnant. She was falling behind. She didn't really do very much while she was home. She did get in trouble. She told me, well, I was on the other side of the law. But she didn't give me any details. I didn't ask. But she pretty much felt stuck. Said she tried the GED, didn't work for her, until she learned about a very special place. You see, Bonnie and Donald and Percy are all students at the Excel Center. It's a free charter school for adults in Indianapolis. The motto is education, any time, any place, any pace. It's the brainchild of Jim McClellan, the president and CEO of the Goodwill in central Indiana. It is a magical place. It's an adult learning model. What do I mean by that? It really meets the adults where they're at. It recognizes that adult learners have unique needs. So students can go to class morning, afternoon, and evening, seven days a week. If they have childcare issues, every location has a drop-in center for kids. Every student has a coach working with the teachers to help the students through. Whether a student comes in with zero credits or needs only five or six credits for graduation, the coach is with them every step of the way. Each student earns credit and, and takes a proficiency exam. It's an intergenerational model so that students who are in their teens and 20s are learning alongside adults who are in their 20s, 30s, 40s. And the younger students bring social media and technology expertise to the older students, and the older students bring a little more maturity and stability to the younger students. It's not unusual at the Excel Center to see parents and their own kids doing homework and studying together. It's not unusual to see a young father holding a baby while he solves an algebraic equation on the board. It's transformational. And it's not just transformational because it's changing lives, because it is changing lives. But it's transformational because it's changing perspectives. These students are changing their own beliefs about what they assumed about themselves, about their assumptions about their ability to learn, their ability to set goals, their ability to achieve their goals, their ability to set their own course and take control of their lives. I asked Bonnie, I said, Bonnie, what surprised you since you've been at this school? And she said, that people see me as a leader. And I said, what has that meant for you? And she said, that I pay attention to how I act, because I know people are watching, and they see me as a role model. And she said proudly, I was elected vice president of student government. I'm like, think about that. 
students going back to school, adults in their 20s and 30s, having the opportunity to be leaders in student government. In addition to working on their diploma, students can earn a credential. So they're learning a skill so that they can get a job and start earning right away. So certificates are given in IT, pharmacy tech, certified nursing assistant, and a whole host of others. I want to tell you about three of the graduates I met. Jermaine, Asia, and Crystal. They all received a credential, and they all went to work in their field. And very recently, a couple of months ago, all three of them walked across the stage in their caps and gowns to accept their diploma in front of their friends and family, and more importantly, in front of their children. It's transformational. It's magical. I would like to bring, along with Goodwill, the Excel Center to Rochester. I need your help. Imagine what it would mean for Nilda and Desiree if they could go back to school and realize their dreams. Imagine what it would mean for their children, who right now are statistically destined to drop out. Imagine what it would mean for hundreds and thousands of school children if they went home to parents who were working on their own education and earning their own diploma. What would it mean for our community for our community psyche, what would it mean for our economy? We can rewrite the headlines. We can break the cycle. Let's make it happen. Thank you.